Hey, Dave, my coworker Harry called out. Come over here and look at this. Do your job, Harry, I replied, knowing his habit of looking at porn on the internet when he should be working. No, Dave, honestly, come and see what I've found. I'm not interested, Harry, I growled at him. It wasn't that I wasn't interested in pictures of beautiful young girls with no clothes on or anything like that, but we needed to finish the job. Besides, Harry usually chose porn much harder than I did. Dave, he persisted. Seriously, you'd like to see this. I looked at him, wondering why I was bothering. What on earth is it? I asked at last, thoroughly annoyed at his manners. There's a girl here who looks just like your Jill, he informed me. For sure, I replied without much interest. Harry kept claiming to have found pictures of different girls we knew, but I'd never known him to be even close to that. Seriously, Dave, he continued, starting to annoy me. She looks just like your missus. She even has long blonde hair and big breasts just like her. Restraining myself from puffing up my cheeks, I got up from the table and went to him, knowing I wouldn't get any peace until I calmed him down. When I got there, I found him looking at Voyeur Web, a sort of self-posting site where guys post sexy pictures of their wives and girlfriends, which I myself had looked at more than once in the past. At least it wasn't hardcore porn like I expected. How the hell can you say this looks like Jill? I demanded looking at the picture on the screen, which showed some blonde girl's rather attractive bare ass. What a jerk that Harry is. Then look at this one, he replied, scrolling down the page to bring up another picture of a girl facing the camera and showing off her rather nice and not insignificant breasts. Ah, heck, she really did look like my wife Jill, just like he'd said. Slender build, pretty face, and long blonde hair that Harry would surely recognize and a lovely pair of nude breasts with C-cups that he probably wouldn't have recognized. A bit like Jill, I reluctantly agreed, not for the first time wondering how husbands persuade their wives and girlfriends to pose so openly. The most Jill would let me do was take topless pictures of her on the beach or in the garden. The trouble was that I was hopeless at photography, didn't understand anything at all, and the pictures turned out so badly that we were both disappointed. Despite my protests, she wouldn't let me take any more pictures. The end of the fantasy. Want to see more Dave? Harry smiled at me. I nodded in agreement. Now I was curious to see what the girl actually looked like, and he scrolled down the page some more. The horror! These pictures were getting hotter and hotter! When we got to the sixth and final one, the girl was smiling at the camera, remaining only in her high heels, putting her hands on her hips and putting one foot on the chair. The result was, well, let's just say it's interesting. The horror. She was showing everything she had, breasts, everything, for crying out loud. Double power. She really, really looked like Jill, and I giggled, remembering how many times I'd fantasized about being able to accidentally show some nude pictures of her to some of my friends. No chance at all. I guess Jill doesn't have a tattoo like Dave, Harry commented. I looked closely, and sure enough, this girl had a small rose tattoo. Of course not, I told him. She might have done it, Harry suggested, whipping his head back and forth to get a better view. Don't be a fool, Harry. Maybe it's just a transference, Harry continued. She could stick it on and easily take it off after the pictures are taken. Why on earth would this girl want to do that? I asked. Well, if it really was Jill, she could have done it in case you saw the pictures. And you think that's likely? I asked. Not really, he admitted reluctantly. It looks like her, though. I motioned for him to continue working and returned to my desk. When I sat down at my desk, my stomach churned and I fought nausea. It might be easy to stick on and peel off an applied tattoo, but when it's real, there's nothing you can do about it, right? Jill had gotten the tattoo about six months earlier as a surprise for me, and I had absolutely no doubt that the naked girl on the website showing off her body to the world was really my wife of eight years, Jill. When I first realized that the girl in the pictures was indeed my wife, I was instantly turned on 
But now the question that plagued me was who the hell took the pictures, because it sure as hell wasn't me. Oh God, what did that mean? There could have been a simple explanation, but I couldn't think of one. And the only explanation that immediately came to mind was not the most pleasant. Trying to work. I can't. Think of something else. Impossible. All I could think about was who the hell had taken those nude pictures of my wife and what else was going on while they were taking them. For what other guy was my beautiful young wife undressing behind my back? There seemed to be only one possibility, and I was not the type to put up with it. To hell with the cow. No wonder I felt like throwing up. As much as I loved her, and I did love her, if she joked behind my back, she'd end up on the street without a word. Shit. There was no point in staying late at work any longer, so making excuses that I had to meet with some client, I half sprinted out of the office in a blind rage. How could she do this to me? All this time, Jill and I were not only husband and wife, but best friends. I loved her so much that it hurt sometimes. And until this day, I always thought she had the same feelings for me. Damn it. As soon as I entered the house, I turned on my computer and started clicking around until a voyeur website came up. It only took me a few moments to find Jill's pictures, as she was featured in the Igor's Choice section, where they chose the prettiest girls and the best pictures. That's five stars already. I took a quick look through the comments section in the vague hope that they might give me some clue as to what was going on, but it was to no avail. The comments ranged from saying how beautiful and sexy she was to stating how much they wanted to fuck her and do nasty things to her. A couple hours ago, it would have been funny, even amusing, but now that I knew what I knew, what in God's name could I say? I scrutinized each picture, something I would hardly have been able to do in Harry's presence. Another slight twist came when I recognized the earrings I had bought her for her last birthday. It was my birthday in a few days, and that was a bloody awful present for me, wasn't it? I groaned when I saw her engagement ring. Whoever the bastard was, this wasn't a one-time affair to get her naked for pictures like this. Maybe it was someone she knew from work. I just didn't know. I haven't. The next thing to do was to think about whether she'd been acting weird lately. Whether there were any clues to her apparent infidelity. Damn it, I thought. When I realized that we'd been making love at least five or six times a week lately. Was that a sign? Not really, I thought, recognizing that we'd been doing it pretty much our entire married life. Had I heard no strange phone calls? Had anyone snapped at me when I picked up the phone? Had Jill started dressing any differently lately? The answer to all of these questions was no. I sat for the next two hours trying to make sense of it all, trying to understand why my loving wife had decided to cheat on me. Would I just leave her to her fate like that? I didn't know if I could, but the likelihood of me finding out was close at hand by then. Oh, Jill, my love, why are you doing this to us? Why did you decide to break my heart? I'm not a super sleuth, and I knew that Jill and I knew each other so well that I wouldn't be able to keep my heartache locked away for longer than a few minutes, so I decided that as soon as she came in, I would talk to her. Find out the truth, no matter how much it hurt though I couldn't feel much worse than I already did as I fought to hold back tears seeing my marriage go downhill. Oh, hi, honey, Jill greeted me as she walked through the door. A smile spread across her beautiful face at the sight of me. Well, that wasn't going to last long, was it? What are you doing home so early, Dave? Don't you have any ideas, Jill? I demanded, and the smile faded a little when she saw the menacing look on my face. No, honey, she replied quietly. No ideas at all. What's the matter? Is there nothing you want to tell me, Jill? I continued. Nothing that you want to talk to me about? This time, her face took on a more serious expression, and she stared at me, no doubt wondering how much I knew about what she was doing behind my back. I guess I had her on the hook, and she didn't know what to say, so she didn't make a mistake. After all, I could be angry about anything, couldn't I? I don't know what you're so upset about, honey, she finally tried, deciding not to show her hand. Who is it, Jill? 
I almost sobbed in frustration. Why? I don't know what you're talking about, Dave, Jill replied, trying to get the upper hand. If you're going to keep talking this kind of crap, Dave, I'm going to take a shower. Shower? Jill always took a shower when she got home from work? Oh, my God. Had she been with him, whoever the bastard was, that day? Did it seem like it was someone she worked with? You're not going to do anything like that, Jill. I shouted, standing up and turning to her. There's something you'd better see. Jill jumped back in surprise and pressed her hand to her mouth. I'd never talked to her like that before, but it looked like that was going to change now. So many things were going to change. Taking her hand, I resolutely led her into my office and sat her down roughly in front of the computer screen. The screensaver, of course, took up the entire screen, and ironically, it showed Jill and I on a beach in Spain last year. Oh, happy memories. Pressing the space bar, the website reappeared on the screen and a picture of my absent-minded wife appeared in front of me, completely naked. Oh my God, exclaimed Jill, recognizing the photo and the website. I looked at her and she was deathly white. All the color had left her face. It was horrible. My last hope of being wrong faded away when I saw her reaction. Who took those pictures of you, Jill? I demanded firmly. Who is that bastard and how long have you been sleeping with him? Sleeping with him? Repeated Jill confusedly. And knowing that I would get to the bottom of this while she was still in shock, I continued. Who is it, Jill? How long has this been going on? Do you love him? Love him? She muttered almost incoherently. No, of course I don't love him. That's it, I thought. It's not love, it's just sex. You're the only one I love. Um, please give me another chance. All the standard phrases cheating wives use when they get caught. I stood there staring at her angrily, wondering which phrase she would choose. It's not what you think, Dave, she wheezed, and the first tear trickled down her pretty cheek. That's it. Hadn't thought of that, but who cared? It was obvious she was guilty as hell. Who is it? I screamed at her again. Who took those damn pictures? John, Jill sobbed in response to my question. Your friend John Haynes. I was stunned. John John Haynes, my best friend. How many times had he come over to our house for dinner? How many times had I helped him figure out his computer or car? How long had we been friends? How long had he and Jill been having fun with each other and laughing at me behind my back? It was obvious now, wasn't it? John was a typical good-looking bachelor who unlike me, changed his women every week or so. He was rarely seen on the street without some luscious young girl in his arms, and the number of people he slept with was legendary. What a bastard. And now he's added my wife Jill to the number of notches on his pole? He's going to regret that for a long time. Honestly, Dave, it's not what you think, Jill repeated. He was just helping me. Helping my goddamn wife, damn you, I snapped back. Damn you, Dave. She yelled back at me, turned on her heels, and ran upstairs. I sat there, resting my head on my hands, my heart broken to the core. This was even worse than I could have imagined. My best friend and my wife. Why, why was this happening to me? You better open it up, Dave. I looked up and saw my beautiful wife standing there, back down the stairs, tears streaming down her face. What is it? I demanded rudely. Your birthday present, Dave, she informed me. It came a couple days early, but I think you should open it now. Put your present in, I told her. Dave, she continued, her voice suddenly low and gentle. Please open it, because I'm afraid of losing you. It could save our marriage. I looked at her and shook my head in bewilderment. But I took the small package from her, tore it open roughly, and discovered some kind of book inside. I took it in my hands and looked at it in disgust. How could this damn book save a broken marriage? Please open it, Dave, Jill begged. Please. So I opened it. What I found inside surprised me, but I still couldn't understand how it could save my marriage. You're teasing me, Jill, I asked her quietly. 
Do you really hate me so much that you're giving me an album of naked pictures of you taken by your fucking lover? John is not my lover, Dave, she pleaded, desperately looking me straight in the eye. This is my special birthday present, just like you've always wanted. You know John is a semi-professional photographer, and I asked him to help me do something special for you. <sighs> oh. Oh, shit. Did I get that right? Did I understand what she had just said? You mean you posed in front of John with no clothes on, Jill? I asked. Is that what you're telling me? Well, yes, I did that with Dave, she admitted. It wasn't easy for me to stand there in the nude in front of our friend, and in fact, at first, I was shaking with fear. But he acted so professional, and I swear he didn't try to touch me or anything. Warmth and honey, sugar and spice, love and birdsong burst back into my life. We fell into each other's arms, professing our love and devotion and apologizing to each other. Everything was good and beautiful. Well, almost. How did those pictures get on the internet then, Jill? I asked, when our emotional level had returned to normal. Well, Dave, she replied, I've been thinking about it myself. You don't think John... That horrible thought kept me from finishing my sentence. That bloody bastard must have sent them to that site, Dave, Jill concluded. How could he have done that? I mean, he promised me no one would ever see them, didn't he? Some friend of John's, it turns out, I said. We stood around pondering how to proceed, made a decision, and a few minutes later were on our way to John's to meet the bug. Hey, you two, the bastard greeted us as he opened the door. I was about to start arguing with him when Jill rushed past me, shoved him in the chest, and started berating him, calling him all kinds of words I didn't even realize she knew. John backed away, looking at us with surprise, even shock. What are you talking about? What did I do? He shouted in his defense. You put those damn pictures of me on the internet, Jill yelled at him. No, I didn't do that, John argued. I would never do that. Then why are they on the Voyeur website? I asked. Voyeur web, he repeated, looking concerned. I couldn't, I couldn't have done that. Oh, shit. With those words, he rushed into his office fired up his computer and typed voyeur web into Google, just as I had hours before. Oh, God, no, cried John in alarm as pictures of my wife appeared in front of him. I uploaded the wrong damn pictures. It should have been Trini in them, not you, Jill. John fiddled with the computer for a bit and then returned to his room ten minutes later, looking a little more pleased with himself. That's it, John announced. I've removed it from the site and I'll post Trini's pictures later. I took note of what he said, since Trini was his current girlfriend, and besides, she was a real little cracker. I made a mental note to check the site in a couple days. Damn you two, I'm so sorry, John said, looking really upset. I don't know what I can do to make it up to you. It's okay, John, I reassured him. Mistakes happen, I guess. But then Jill intervened, telling me to wait a bit. After all, it was her nudity that was on display. How does Trini feel about you showing pictures of her in public? I assume they're without clothes. Yes, Jill, he explained. But she's changed a bit into a different colored wig, so none of her family or friends will know it's her except those she wants to tell. Jill stood looking back and forth at John and me, immersed in thought. John, you have those wigs here already, she finally asked. Of course, he confirmed. They're upstairs in my studio. Then let's go, she ordered the two of us, starting to unbutton her blouse. John, you're going to pay us back for your mistake. And you, honey, are going to get another fantasy for your birthday. We obediently followed her, and by the time she reached the bottom of the stairs, she was completely naked again following her up the stairs with her naked ass a few feet in front of the two of us was very satisfying, let me tell you. Oh my God, Dave, Harry turned to me a few days later. Come and look at that redhead on this site. This time, somewhat more eagerly, I approached his desk. What a little beauty, isn't she? Harry commented lustfully. Look at those breasts. Bloody marvelous, I agreed. Just look at those legs. For once I agree with you completely, Harry. I agreed. 
That redhead is just stunning. Can you imagine going to bed with a beauty like that, Dave? He asked me. Can you imagine what it would be like to fuck a girl like that? Yes, I think I can, Harry, I replied smugly. I really think I can. What a laugh. <laughs>